Welcome back, First Hour Faithfuls, to yet another episode of The First Hour. This is the show where I, Colin Tanner from Video Games Are Dumb, and you, the legions of First Hour Faithfuls, take a look at the first hour of a recently released video game. So remember to like, subscribe, and bring the fire in the comments below for this episode, Sin and Punishment on the Nintendo 64, and the Wii U. A lot of story going on here. This game is available on the Wii U eShop. It was already released on the uh, Wii eShop a few years ago. We're going to go under training real quick because I want to learn exactly how to play this game. This game has a, uh, a very interesting history. Oh god. I'm your coach and I'll be guiding you through the tutorial. <laughs> So funny. I, I'll just lock on you. I just did. You just gotta use the uh, the left trigger on the uh, eShop. Manual shooting. So this game was um, originally released on the Nintendo 64 in 2000, and uh, it was made by Treasure, which is a pretty big deal. Alright, now we're getting to the real deal. And I won't say the game was hotly anticipated, uh, but people did want to play it. They were looking forward to it. And so when, out of nowhere it seemed, the game was cancelled, that was very disappointing. You might be saying, cancelled? Well, how are we playing it? Well, it wasn't cancelled for uh, the Japanese audience. It was, in fact, released in Japan. Nintendo just pulled it from their release schedule altogether. Oops, my bad, man. Oh, I do want that apple, though. Oh, it's, I literally went out of my way to shoot that guy. I have to use the lock on to shoot around walls, right? <laughs> what the hell is that? Top. I got the strafing button. So you can use the right stick on the, uh, on the gamepad to actually move the character around, which honestly controls a lot better than even the 64 version did. So it's kind of a big deal that this is being re-released alongside Sin and Punishment 2, or whatever they call it, Star Successor in America. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people want another Sin and Punishment title. I don't know if Nintendo is brazen enough to actually put out one on the Wii U, but maybe on the NX. It's not like these titles have ever sold particularly well. Uh, maybe it's because Nintendo didn't release it. They were confident that the original Sin and Punishment wasn't going to sell, for whatever reason. I think I'll just use the D-pad for the rolling. Alright, makes me temporarily invulnerable. You really gotta roll the D-pads a lot easier. But then you're taking your eye off the, uh, off the prize here. I wonder if, just out of curiosity, controller settings. Yes, what if, what if I assign this with the C buttons? Yeah, baby. And I sign that. No way. Reassigning this would mean Oh dear god. That is so much easier. So much easier. Oh man, you can't even compare it. Now I'm walking with the left analog stick. And aiming with the right. Come on, that's amazing. I could also just walk with the D-pad, which is a better representation of 
the uh, of the C buttons. Such a weird sound that ugh, because you think of playing as like this girl. Ugh. I always thought this was a girl. I might be wrong. You can double jump as well. Yeah, I highly recommend everybody go and change the controls. This plays a lot better. Now I'm just using the D-pad to move left and right. And, um... It feels pretty modern, if I'm being completely honest. Uh. Yeah, this is the way to go. There's really no reason for me to be shooting, but there's also really no reason for me not to be shooting if you think about it. There we go. Oh, snap. Oh, no. Screwed up. I know how to double jump. Shit. I was double jumping before you even told me to double jump. Oh man. That's intense. It is a little difficult to see what's in the background here. Like what's coming up next. Because it all just kind of blends together. I will say right now, this music is amazing. That should be it for the tutorial, I assume. Oh, no, they're not done yet. Yeah, it's a little tricky here. Life. What? Oh, when enemy is close, that's when the sword comes out. This game looks amazing for a Nintendo 64 title. There's no denying that. It's incredible. It's one of the best looking Nintendo 64 games, hands down. Why does it keep saying miss? I thought I was doing fine. I'm the coach's father, so you've been training with my daughter. But will you not take her... But you will not take her away from me. My missiles will keep you from getting near... This is ridiculous. Change my targeting type to automatic lock-on. That way I can just jump around them. Although manual aim might actually give me more advantages here. It's so stupid. It's got a lot of help. I don't know if I, uh... I don't know if I'm actually gonna sit through all this. I, I guess it's just a... A time sequence. I assume you're not actually supposed to kill him. That's what I thought. Insane. Awesome. Alright, let's get right into it. Let's play some actual Sin and Punishment here. Wow. Just gorgeous. Reminds me a lot of Panzer Dragoon, really. Get bonus. 
Get bonus indeed. Get bonus for all. Yeah, this was one of those games that I knew a lot of people played on emulators. Or if they had somehow modded uh, copies of the game. Because I, I think if you just removed the sides of the Japanese cartridges, they would fit into American consoles, I believe. Like, they just had wider sides. I had a couple Japanese, or maybe just one Japanese Nintendo 64 game back in the day. Like, actual yeah, Japanese. Almost all my games were from Japan back then. I mean, this was uh, of a certain time, really, when um, when anime was just starting to really blow up in America. You know, Dragon Ball really was the catalyst for a lot of that. Obviously, we had already had anime in the past, like Robotech, but this was the real deal. Like, this is when we started to see some real American otakus uh, being a lot more vocal about getting releases from Japan, and that would continue. For a while and still goes on to this day but there's just not as many Japanese exclusive games as there once were which makes me sad I always like to imagine that there's some mysterious amazing title that us Americans just didn't get gives you that sense of mystery you know oh crap gotta jump over that yeah seriously change your controls if you play this like no joke so much easier. There we go. My hundred and forty four hit bonus. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's lock right on to you. I mean treasure as a studio uh, was always about these big action games. They obviously made Gunstar Heroes on the Genesis. Uh, and on the 64, I believe this was their only title other than Mischief Makers, which was pretty much a first year Nintendo 64 2D platformer. Also, pretty much like maybe the only 2D platformer on the 64? That can't be right. There might be one more, but you know, as far as I recall. Saki. Oh, this is crazy. This game is in English. English voice acting and Good everything. Good morning, Saki. Good morning, Iron. Oh, that was a dream sequence? That's weird. Full voice acting, very impressive on the 64. Good models, too. We've got work to do. Let's go. Oops. It's kind of interesting because this is a lot like almost virtual cop in some ways. Yeah, the game is not necessarily on the. I mean, it's on the rails, but it's not like an endless running game. You're definitely going to be stopping throughout the title. Ooh, points. I want points. I always take care of it. Why don't you guys do something? You jerks. I guess I'm playing this on easy mode, but that's how the game starts off. Like when you turn on the game, it says easy, so I assume that's what. For them, that's what normal is. So, who am I to argue? My lock on feature. Oh boy. There we go. Lock right onto this guy. Boom. I was supposed to shoot that. Already?
Oh god. This, this also really reminds me of the PlayStation 1 game, Project Horned Owl. For no particular reason other than you're just going through a city shooting a bunch of stuff, and it's got that big anime feel. Man. Where'd they come from? A lot of the reviews that were coming out about this at the time, like I think IGN reviewed the Japanese version, and it just was like, oh, this is one of the best 64 games ever, and it's like, shut up, like, don't tell us that, we don't want to know how good it is if we can't play it. And people had hopes that somebody was going to come out on the GameCube, and that never happened. There were always rumors about Sin and Punishment, and the only reason they really released Sin and Punishment on the eShop is because they were making Sin and Punishment 2. Oh man, get my ass kicked. Oh, I could have done a sword swipe, I think, right there. These electrical attacks so easy to dodge. I mean, this was really like an arcade experience brought home, except it wasn't an arcade game. And even in 2000, arcades were still somewhat relevant, you know? They were still influencing game design in some aspects. Uh, not for much longer. You could even argue that two years later, arcades had lost all relevance outside of Dance Dance Revolution. Elevator moving. You think they're Aqua? Maybe, but they're probably more worried about the ruffles. I hear voices up above. I'll check it out. Just keep the elevator moving. Just keep the elevator moving. I turn off my lock controls. Still feels, you know, if you if you change the controls like I did, this still feels really good, like very very good. It's a lot of fun to play. So check this out. Here we go. Yeah, I got you guys. Oh crap! Better turn it on manual. Can I control normal invert? No, no. I'm okay with it not being inverted, but I was kind of hoping. Oh no. The guy got behind me. Did you just shoot the platforms out from under him? You can take him out a lot quicker. So funny. Yar, yar, yar. Use my sword attacks here. Oh god, I'm running out of time. Oh boy, that was actually super close. Treasure nowadays is most well known for Ikaruga, which is kind of sad to me because even though that's a good game, it's kind of like they made so much more than that. They made a ton of really great stuff. Get bonus. 
I guess the others. I just wish the other stuff was as well known. Even Gunstar Heroes, I guess most people don't know about, which makes me really sad. I love Gunstar Heroes. The transport, Iron, take the control. Hurry, Stocky! <laughs> <laughs> the ruffian's commander. It's pretty big changes in perspective, as you can see. That only had 10 seconds. I actually have 70 seconds. Bam. I didn't even use my gun. I was using my sword pretty much the whole time for that boss fight. My research materials. How could you? So you're the leader of these killers. Kachua, stop. He's one of the rebels. Let me take him. He's only human. Now's our chance to test the power of the blood you gave me. Great voice acting, by the way. Just great. Oh god. Okay, wait. Really creepy. Because these guys aren't actually really fighting or anything, she's just using them. You can't actually beat her, can you? I can't remember if this one of those bosses that just sort of happens. She's got a lot of hobbies, like exploding, mostly exploding. But sometimes throwing dead soldiers. Aha, uh -huh, it was the sword attack. You have to throw the sword right at her. That was clever. Clever game design. I like that. Yeah, rare. Totally. Oh, just the skyscraper. Oh, sure. Yeah, hey, don't overreact or anything, but I guess uh, you could see this explosion from space. Oh, good. And it's destroying at least a fourth of Japan right now. Okay, Saki. Show me what you've got. Okay. Usually, Japanese games wait for the end to end the world. Hear me, hear me. 
Kachua used to be a good guy or something. That's pretty much a constant rare theme is the bad guy used to be a good guy, but it was always before the game happened. Wow, look at me. I, I can teleport now. I guess Neon Genesis fans will probably flip out over this game, as they did way back in the day. See a lot of resemblance to that. Now, it's kind of a dick move. Oh, now you're now you're the hiding version of yourself. So you're like the lame version. Is that what you are, the lame version? Yeah, I can definitely see how playing on easy mode would be pretty recommended by me. Because <laughs> this is pretty brutal. Oh no, I'm dead. Hmm. Yeah, of course. I was getting worried there, like you only got one shot. But this ain't no 8 mile. This is real life. So just gotta keep using those dash maneuvers if you want to get anywhere. Supposed to, oh, I guess I'm just supposed to dodge again when that happens. No, no, I guess not. I have no idea what to do. Not to get hurt there. Never stop doing this, is my plan. It's just dodge, dodge, dodge all the time. Hey, cool, alright. I really like this game so far, by the way. I think this is an excellent, excellent title. We can't go near him yet. Is that, is that sock and tension back, okay? Just not now. We're the only ones left. Everyone else is dead. Damn it! <laughs> what? <laughs> not, not great voice acting at all. Amazing voice acting, but not good voice acting, if you know what I mean. <laughs> There's an enemy out there, a monster. I won't let it run free. Thinking of revenge? I lost Kachua. What? Now it's Achi's turn to lose something. Kachua's gone. Think of the living, like me. Wow. That's... Radon. 
awful. <laughs> it's the women I passed by absolutely my awful. Two. How could they? Achi, I'm going to show the world how weak your beast really is. Weak my beast? What? This is the safest spot. It's the armed volunteer ship. Attention, attention. Our defense of Tokyo has failed, but we shall remain in Japan to battle this new beast. <laughs> beast? Its target is the ruffian lair in Hokkaido. By eating ruffians, it will strengthen us. By assimilating them, it will threaten humanity. Radon's tragedy can't be repeated. As your commander, I urge you to find the courage to engage this beast. Ridiculous. Him! So he's their commander! <laughs> Alright. Time to get back- whoops. Keep pressing that. Get back to an actual game that sort of makes sense. Not really. I can honestly say I have no idea what's happening. Japan blew up though, and that's all that matters to me. I don't see the relation between what we just saw and me fighting this cat. I really don't. It's such an original take on the on the shoot 'em up, though. I'm not sure if I'm actually doing enough damage here. Oh, I gotta cut the flowers? Got it. That's... I've been making a big mistake. The well, spooky eye guy doesn't want me to kill his cat. I probably screwed up here, and I'll have to do it over, but at least I have a clue what I'm doing this time. Well, kind of. Did you say Irem? Are you talking about Irem, the developer? And... Alright. Start that bad boy over. Oh boy. Well, that just screwed up everything. Ugh. Crap. I need to create a save point. Let's try and check the time on the video. I just walked right into that. Mmm. I wish I could just restart. I'll take some life, get some bonus, and now I should be able to defeat this creature no problem. I kill this dude's cat. Like, I honestly don't get why this is part of the game. I'm not complaining, I like the idea of killing pets in a video game.
It's not gonna get away from me. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, I get it. No. I've been doing it all wrong the whole time. In fact, we're gonna cheat a little bit next time we get started on this. I have 11 credits left. Store point. There we go. Everything's fixed. No, that took a little longer than usual. Close enough to do my sword attack. Oh man, what? That thing is bleeding pretty badly. Or it looked like it was bleeding. What? I gotta start using my sword more frequently in regular battles like this. Yeah, I can see how back in 2000 my mind would be blown by this title. <laughs> this, uh, this would have been really high up for me. Because I did love Japanese stuff back then. I still do, but I don't think I could ever love Japanese stuff as much as I used to. <laughs> Holy crap. I'd be watching freaking Japanese news stations. That was really hard to come by back then. now. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Well, at least I can have just enough time to finish off that guy. Well, Arm volunteer weapon? What are you doing? Man, that pattern was pretty fast and loose there. Get the life, get the life. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh my god. If that's the case, then you know I got a credit save point, because I just got some life back, and uh, I'm not sure how much more I'm going to be able to survive here. Oh man. It's giving me life. God. Traps 
those were for ruffians? So what they captured broke free? <laughs> Just walking backwards. I got him, motherfucker. This is amazing. This is simply amazing. It's it's just such a thoughtful thoughtful game. I mean, it keeps finding ways to reinvent its base mechanics, which really aren't that complicated, yet its level design is so smart that you, you feel like you're playing a new New, you're having a new experience, you know. Oh god. Well, that's me being stupid right there. I said I still have no idea what's going on in this game. I gotta kill her first. Totally dead, dude. I don't know if you're aware of that. Boom, man. Nice try. You want to go for another? This is really good. He also had strange powers. Strange powers indeed. It seems Achi has taught you nothing. My powers were given to me by Achi. Achi passed her blood to me. The same goes for that kid who transformed into the beast. Saki is nothing like you. I never thought you'd try to make friends by passing your blood. But what does that mean? Perhaps not friends. Perhaps research for your transformation. Change can be a scary thing when you don't know how to change back. I ran. Do you want to change Saki back into a human? What is going on? Watch out. All fighters away from the flagship. What? The floor! If they attack Saki from the air, then we'll need this. <laughs> sure, why not?
I, I honestly, this is basically like Bayonetta 2 in the year 2000. It's kind of amazing. There's a lot of things to shoot. It's actually making it kind of difficult to pick which one to focus on. I think manual is more powerful than uh, lock on. Maybe I'm crazy, but I could swear. going on here? Do I have to fight the choppers? I don't. That's weird. They're just here. They're not actually doing anything. I blew the ship up. That should be good enough. Still got too much health. Not gonna be able to make it. Well, maybe. No, I'm dead. There's no way I can come back from this. Sucks. Uh, I hope I actually have. Oh, it's not like they're gonna give me a checkpoint. Damn it. Please continue. Hmm. Guess I'll do it again. Well, oh, that's actually not so bad. Yeah, they did give me a pretty reasonable checkpoint. It's right before the boss fight. They gotta shoot Spike Spiegel's ship. The swordfish. Yeah, the uh, the manual shooting is way more powerful. That's weird. Why did I have so much trouble with that last time? It was like nothing this time. the commander again okay come here oh man I totally had him
Yeah. It's that short attack. <laughs> Why are they all standing in that shape? That's so weird. Oh, wow. Wait, what? Oh, so the missile... I can knock it back into the... Oh, wow. I just gotta use my sword. As soon as this stage is over, I think we're gonna have to wrap it up. Cause you know. It's the first hour. Even though I could play this game forever. It's really taught me not to blink. That's what this game has taught me to do. It's hardcore. Here we go. You will get us through this crisis. All right. Let's see if I can take him out. Oh man. Damn, I thought I could do that. But I guess I couldn't. Slap missiles in his direction. Aw oh, man, I was trying to do a sword attack right there. <laughs> These are really impressive graphics for the 64. Like, crazy impressive. Sense of scale and everything. What is going on here? 
Well, I'm gonna let this insane story play out in the background while I say that this is the end of this episode of The Last Hour. The Last Hour? The First Hour. Uh, do I recommend Sin and Punishment? Let's get real here for a second, guys. This game is $12. Holy crap. This game is $12 on the eShop. That's $2 more than any of the other Nintendo 64 games. It's literally 15 years old. It's It doesn't control right when the game starts off. You actually have to go in there and manually change your controls. Should you actually spend that kind of money on this game? Yeah, you should. This game's a lot of fun. I love its attitude. You know, it's sort of light and fluffy, but at the same time, it's majorly epic. Japan's getting destroyed and shit's going down. You got swords slashing, gun shooting, uh, fighting cats, flying on aircraft carriers. It's pure madness. Like, it's so unhinged. And that's actually really nice in this day and age. You know, the only other game I can really compare it to is Bayonetta 2. It doesn't play anything like Bayonetta 2, but it just has that spirit. Maybe Azura's Wrath or something like that, where it goes so over the top that it, it's just enjoyable to watch. But, taken based off of its mechanics alone, it's a really fascinating title. Because it is essentially, you know, that on-the-rail shooter, but it just feels so different. You know, it's, it's, it's the only 3D game I can think of that really feels like a shooter. Not a first-person shooter, a shooter, a shoot 'em up whatever you want to call it, you know, Space Invaders, Gradius, Raiden, uh, Zixanandu, or whatever. Oh, this really has that feel of it, and the combination of the sword abilities, the rolling, the double jumping, it, it just, it, it's this perfect blend of all these concepts, and it, it's just, it's really, really enjoyable. So, yeah, I would absolutely 110% recommend that you absolutely spend the $12 and, and play Sin and Punishment on the Nintendo 64. Besides that, the voice acting is absolutely atrocious, and that is hilarious. You, you've got to experience this. I, I mean, you, you probably watched this video, and you, you, I don't know how long the game is. I imagine it can't be that long, you know. So maybe you saw a good portion of the title, but playing it's very different because that level design is so well thought out that everything feels slightly different. Everything is slightly different than what you're expecting and I really adore this. I really, I really adore this game. Absolutely, absolutely recommend. 100%, no regrets whatsoever. $12, that is a bargain for what is a sublime experience. I still recommend you do go into the controls, switch the C buttons for the uh, left analog stick and the, uh, and the analog stick for the right analog stick. It's gonna make a world of difference. Um, I wish that it was, you know, I wish I could move my cursor faster, but, you know, that's a minor complaint. Come on, you know, they, they I'm sure they, they wanted to establish how they were going to build the game, so they had to pick a cursor speed. That was probably the only way they could really test it. So, you know, different time, different place, treasure, you're just, you're magic. Gunstar Heroes, Ikaruga, Sin and Punishment, Mischief Makers. Uh, whatever that shadow game is, I always forget the name of it. <laughs> that was on the PS2. Just magical. Just the, the feeling that you can only get from a treasure game. Go to Star Superheroes on Game Boy Advance. So, you know what? Absolutely. 100% recommend. I, I I can't wait. I got Sin and Punishment 2 that I'm going to go check out right now. And that was on the Wii. So, I guess, uh, I guess it's going to be compare and contrast. Could they keep up with the success of that? Well, I guess you're going to have to find out unless you already watched that video. Then you already know how I feel about it. But, uh, yeah, that'll do it for this episode of the first hour. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Do you plan on picking up Sin and Punishment on the Wii U? Uh, did you ever play it back in the day? Did you play it on an emulator? What are your thoughts on the overall title and its unique control scheme, sense of humor, and graphics? I mean, let me know. I want to hear from you. That way we can have a little dialogue back and forth in the comments. Everybody be respectful of one another. So if someone comes in and says, This game fucking sucks, then everyone goes, Oh, fuck you, man. No, we don't need that. Be cool with one another. You can come in and say, Man, this game fucking sucks. And that's just your opinion. That's cool. No one has to get mad at you. Uh, but that'll do it for this episode of the first hour. Like, subscribe, share, bring the fire in the comments below. I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.